When it comes to native ads, I'm pretty sure that you are already familiar that it's crucial to have an advertorial in your funnel. However, when it comes to the advertorial, there are many question marks. How do you build the best advertorial and where do you host it? Should you write something like a blog article or should you create a dedicated advertorial or should you buy an advertorial? on famous platforms like Forbes. In this video, you will learn everything about it and you will see the best solution in my opinion. Hi everyone, my name is Marcel Sattler. I'm the founder of Purple Black, a native advertising only agency. We run profitable performance marketing campaigns for our clients on native advertising traffic sources like Tabula, Outbrain, MDID, Ref Content, and many, many more. And you can imagine we created in the last 13 years because we do nothing but native. So we created a bunch thousands of different landing pages or advertorials. And we know exactly what is important here and what to avoid. So first things first, you should definitely avoid not to use an advertorial. It makes almost every time sense to use an advertorial. There are some exceptions, for example, for a retargeting campaign or so, we're usually not using an advertorial anymore, but for every prospecting campaign, we use an advertorial to master native ads, to make it profitable, generate a positive return on investment, includes usually two crucial parts. One part is the media buying. So you have to do media buying correctly. That means it's a lot of manual work and you have to have the experience to understand what to do and what things and what changes are necessary in your account in order to master native ads professionally and make them profitable. But the second part, and this is what the majority of people forget here, this is the content part because native advertising is not just media buying, but it's also content. Always keep in mind, please, when we speak about native ads, people usually read a newspaper article, they scroll down at the bottom of the page, then they're in the moment of next, and then they want to see, okay, what can I read next? What catches my curiosity here? And therefore it's content marketing, very important to understand. It's content marketing and you have to provide new content on a continuous basis. You don't have this very high ad fatigue like you have it on TikTok or so, that's not the case. But we create usually content on a continuous basis to hit our baselines, to get better and better results for our clients. Because if you're just a one man show, for example, of course you can just stop somewhere. But the chances then are very high that on the long run, you will lose your campaign success. Therefore, we have our baseline and we try every week to hit it with new content. Therefore, we do produce content on a continuously basis for our clients. And this is what I meant with its two parts. One part is the media buying part and the other part is the production of content part, of valuable content, of high quality content. And this is also why I mentioned it's no point, honestly, to just hire a random freelancer on Fiverr or so to get the media buying stuff done. Because then you have a puzzle, you have one puzzle part, you know, you have the media buying part. Wow. But what's about the copywriting part? What's about the landing page design part? What's about the landing page optimization part that everything loads fast and quickly, you know, like all these things. Therefore, I'm not a huge fan of just hiring one person for media buying and that's it because... I've never seen on the long run a working case here that this is going to work. And this is the reason why I'm not a fan of like just going on Fiverr and hire one freelancer for the media buying part. Because yes, media buying is one crucial point for the success of your campaigns. But, and here's a huge but, you also need way, way more things like for example the editorials. Hey, here stop a little break from the content because I need your help. We started this YouTube channel to help you guys to learn native advertising. However, we do this completely for free, but we need your support. We are already the largest YouTube channel about native ads on YouTube. Thank you for that. I'm thrilled about this. And we have so many things in our pipeline to publish here on YouTube, but here we need you. I would extremely appreciate if you give me a thumbs up if you like this video and comment below What's your greatest learning so far out of this video? Thank you very much. So let's speak now about the editorial itself. And there are many different options. You can, for example, or imagine you have a WordPress website and there you just can host, of course, also a blog article about your product. Another option we usually have is to create your own editorial offsite, for example, on a different domain. And last but not least, you can also pay someone like Forbes or so to have something like a guest article or so. There are a few companies where you can purchase more or less 
the advertorial on a more famous website. Let me start here from the back with the last one we stopped with, with the bought advertorial. And in my opinion, this is no point because usually these advertorials are made for SEO marketing. They're not made for performance marketing. Usually do have a lot of restrictions there, what things you can use. And also out of my own experience, it's very hard to make some changes, to optimize it. When it comes to tracking, it's a pain in the ass and it's unnecessary costs, you know, because of course those advertorials, they cost money. Those companies, they want to charge you an amount X to publish your article on their infrastructure. So long story short, we tested it. It's definitely not my recommendation when it comes just to performance marketing with native ads. An okay option is to use your own blog. For example, you have the domain abc.com and you do have there your landing page, but you do also have there a blog. So you can, of course, here write a good blog article and send people to your blog, which is on the same domain. However, I would not recommend this in an idle case because people do see here directly that this is a branded advertorial. So basically you're the brand owner and you're telling the people out there, my brand is cool. Wow. This is basically what every salesperson says about their product. You have to look out very long to find a salesperson who is not convinced by their product. So long story short, some of the brands are doing this because of branding, but you have to keep in mind that with this branding, you pay a price. You pay the price of less performance. And therefore I would not recommend it because we at Purple Black, we take always a look on the campaigns from a return on investment level. Because branding is pretty hard to measure, but return on investment is easy to measure. Therefore that's our focus. And with this in mind, we usually go for the third option here. And the third option here is a dedicated landing page, a dedicated editorial on a third party domain on an external domain, because then even though it's like your domain, you can buy it, you know, it's like uh, you have a brand for, let's say, I don't know, like those cases for smartphones, and then you can buy a separate domain, like smartphonereviews.com or whatever, or smartphonecasesreviews.com, something like this. And of course it's your domain, and of course you control every part what's on this domain. However, it's a third party, it's a third party brand for the prospect, which is, telling more or less the prospect that your brand is cool. And this does have a very different impact if you compare it with I say I'm cool or a third party website says I'm cool because trust me, almost nobody will recognize that this is your brand. And here comes native ads in because native ads there are a bit sneaky, you know, it's like ads which are not looking like ads. Also when it comes to the ad directly, people or the majority of people are not really recognizing that your native ads, that those are ads. They think it's an article from NBC or whatever, from their website, they trust and they are on at this moment. So therefore my personal recommendation is always buy a separate domain, use a landing page builder, whatever, or WordPress, doesn't matter what technology you use. It's like more about personal preferences. But take these 15 minutes to create a logo, set up the domain and put it there and just speak like a third party brand over your or about your brand and not directly. It has a huge impact and is definitely more positive for your return on investment when it comes to native ads. I hope you liked that video. If so, again, I would extremely appreciate if you give me a thumbs up and of course, when you subscribe to my channel. See you, have a good time. Hey, here stop a little break from the content because I need your help. We started this YouTube channel to help you guys to learn native advertising. However, we do this completely for free, but we need your support. We are already the largest YouTube channel about native ads on YouTube. Thank you for that. I'm thrilled about this. And we have so many things in our pipeline to publish here on YouTube, but here we need you. I would extremely appreciate if you give me a thumbs up, if you like this video and comment below, What's your greatest learning so far out of this video? Thank you very much.